Good morning, Sofa Squad. It's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I'm doing well. Today, we are going to be talking about day seven of the Brent Christensen trial. It's still going on. For those of you who might just be new to this one, this is a federal trial going on right now. The accused is Brent Christensen. Uh, his victim is Ying Ying Zhang. Uh, it was a pretty horrific crime, if you ask me. Aren't they all? And uh, it's going on right now. And so we're going to be reviewing day seven in this video. I'm just going to be going through some of the reporter's notes. Uh, in these type of federal court cases like this, the, there's no cameras allowed. So we're just going on what reporters are noting and all that type stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Thursday morning, the jury in the Brent Christensen trial heard more clips recorded by his former girlfriend, Tara Bullis. Uh, as, if you've been following this, you know that she wore a wire. And uh, they went to a march for the victim, and she was wired up there, got some very damning uh, conversations with him on tape. So they're just talking about that. Uh, now, two days before the June 30th, 2017 campus vi vigil for missing University of Illinois scholar Ying Ying Zhang, Christensen told Bullis he drove by Bullis's apartment June 9th. Bullis asked why he didn't text her as she wasn't busy. Christensen claimed she was. At one point in the recording, he said, nothing you can tell them is actually going to help me, you, or Michelle, referring to his wife. So, again, if you remember, he kind of lives in like a polyamorous type situation. He's married. Uh, they have an open relationship. So Terrace's girlfriend, Michelle's his wife, and she has a boyfriend too or whatever, or his ex-wife at this point. Uh, he said that that's what his lawyers told him, and he thinks his wife is on board. Now, I think that's very interesting right there. Now, let's just jump to the paragraph before here where he says that he drove by her apartment, and she says, why didn't you text me? And he said that she was. Again, one of the things that I think is a, a factor in this event that's taken place is he's in this open relationship. He's living this whole life of, you know, of that or whatever. And again, to each their own or whatever. I'm not trying to judge that. Uh, but he seems to me like he, he, and it's my understanding that Michelle was the one who prompted the open relationship. And so then he's also with this girl who, another time she kind of made it known that you know, oh, hey, you know, I can't hang out right now. I'm with another guy. And he seems to have issues with that. And so I think he's one of those types that says, oh, I want to you know, do this open relationship thing, but it's not really cool with him. Because I've, I'm interpreting this com these comments from him as, well, you're busy. You know, hey, I, I did a drive-by in your house. And you know what I'm saying? Like, he's kind of stalking her to see what she was doing. So, I mean, she had to be creeped out. Anyways, let's continue. So, also heard, this is what they wrote. Um, Christensen said he didn't recognize a picture of Miss Zong because I don't know Chinese people. Uh, and he said he was trying to help her, so the moral of the story is not to help people. And also, and not to kill them as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, he said he's the scapegoat of the investigation. I, I mean, the, the, this one, y'all, takes the cake as far as, uh hypocrisy goes, but the egotisticalness, I mean, in his world, the way he talks, he is completely innocent of this, and really upset at being, you know, put out with having to do all this stuff. It's just mind-blowing to me. Anyways. Thank you for holding. Christensen talked about the notorious serial killer, Ted Bundy, getting love letters in prison. Bullis asked if he still had fantasies about serial killers. Maybe he responded. So this obviously is the thing going on or whatever with him. He talked about how it's easier for serial killers to get away with crimes if their victims are prostitutes. Uh, and that he's partly fascinated by Bundy because he killed college-aged women. Okay. I mean, I, I, a lot of people can say they have a fascination with Bundy, but because they prefer his selected victims is a little bit, you know, okay. Uh, interesting. Anyways, uh, Christensen, he, Christensen said he wished he could talk more freely, but he still felt paranoid. Even if I did do it, he said, I don't want to tell anyone. It's like he's dying to tell somebody, y'all. Dying to tell somebody. Uh, Bulla said she wanted to know everything, but Christensen said she could then be considered an accomplice and face jail time. 
So, I mean, he's just, don't you, y'all, he is this person right here. Okay, like, you know how you have a friend, or nowadays, like, people do it on Facebook, where, you know, somebody will do a post or whatever and be like, can't believe this is happening. And then you're like, what? Tell me. Don't want to talk about it. Like, he is that friend, y'all. But this is, like, the take-the-cake level of it. You know, may might have killed somebody, might not have, don't really want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, oh, my God, this guy. I mean, he just... We don't even thank God we don't have to see him in court because remember when we watched the Tim Jones Jr. trial, how he just like by the end of it for us, we were like, we just want to pick him up by his ears. Like, this guy, I think, would be times 10 of that. So, let's keep rolling. So, uh, Bullis said she'd be loyal, but Christensen said, People aren't rational when confronted with a decision like that. I care about you too much to ever try and put you in that situation. That's very nice of him. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this reporter's update later in the day about the testimony. This is in reference to Tara Bullis, the ex-girlfriend. When asked how she felt after Brent Christensen confessed to her, his ex-girlfriend Tara Bullis said, devastated. And when asked about testifying, like how she felt about that, terrified. So why do it? Because it's necessary, she said. Tapes the Bullis made of her and Christensen at the campus vigil for visiting... University of Illinois scholar Ying Ying Zong were played again in court as Christensen continued to avoid eye contact with Bullis. She texted him to ask why he wanted to go to the vigil, and he replied, I want to go because, I don't know, he, but he typed it IDK, short for I don't know. Uh, I don't know. When she met him at the top of the stairs at Cranert Center for the Performing Arts, she wasn't recording immediately because she was concerned about battery life. So Christensen showed her a collar he wanted her to wear. I remember, they were kind of into BDSM and that type of stuff. Uh, so I guess that that's what he was doing with her. So that's what the collar is. She said it wouldn't be appropriate because they were in public and at a somber event. He didn't make her wear it. Okay, so another thing that's going on here, and again, I don't know the rules and all that type of stuff of this lifestyle. She sounds like she is more versed in like the, the rules and stuff because at one point, and, and I don't know if we'll come to it or not, and I might be saying this too soon, but when... She says why she told him that she was with another guy. She was like, well, I was just being basically upfront. She called it something about basically like the, the, the ethics of polyamory or something like that. You know, I was being upfront and being like, hey, look, you know, everything's out on the table. I'm with somebody else right now. So that type thing. So this where he's coming up and being like, hey, I want you to wear this collar. You know, at a, at, at a vigil or vigil, I, I think I'd say it both ways. Um, for his victim, I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, this guy just has no soul. And so she's just like, no, we're out in public. This is not that kind of an event. I'm not going to wear a collar. Are you crazy? You know, like, I mean, it's a somber event. Like, somebody died or you, what? You know, anyways. Uh, he seemed to be smiling a lot and happy, Bullis said about Christensen. He also had a water bottle with alcohol in it, he told her. They're here for me. And she realized she should be recording, so she went inside to begin the process. He said, by the end of the night, you'll be even more mine. Which Bullis said Thursday didn't make any sense. And she could have at this point been thinking that he's going to kill her. I mean, my God. Uh, someone was handing out pamphlets at the vigil, which Christensen, which Christensen called souvenirs. He said he wanted to go to the concert because that's also for me. Then he wrote the number 13 on her hand with his fingertips. Bullis said... I mean, y'all, this guy is such a loser. Uh, she turned off the recording device during the concert and went to the bathroom, sent two emails to the FBI, and deleted them. When she returned, Christensen took her phone and looked through it. Y'all. I mean, this guy knows no boundaries, y'all. I mean, this guy is about complete ownership right here. I mean, this is, this is scary. So, anyways. Uh, he then opened the Notes app, wrote four lines and deleted them. According to Bullis, who choked up as she read these, Christensen wrote, it was me. She was number 13. She is gone forever. Now, let me tell you, y'all, and so maybe he, the, the part about being recording and stuff like that, and I guess they don't have a way to retrieve that from the phone either, so, I mean, I'm just thinking, why would you put that on her phone? I mean, just could not wait to tell her. Couldn't wait. Y'all, if he killed 13 people, I don't believe he killed 13 people. I would be in shock if he did. Because, y'all, this guy is way too out there. I mean, it's this is a, I want to get caught. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he didn't want to get caught, but he's so out there with it that it's like, dude, you're, you're going to get caught. So, 
Uh, during the concert, he continued drinking, she said. Uh, it was incredibly disrespectful for the missing person and all the people there, she said. She also said she was afraid of getting caught. I don't blame her. I would be, too. At the end of the event, she said he clapped in a way, in a way not like anything I had seen, adding that they were long staccato claps instead of normal quick claps. She said Christensen did not join others in a standing ovation at the end. Such disrespect for the victim. I mean, literally just a spit on your grave type situation. And literally, he didn't even know this person. Just for the sake of like rebelling against society's norms and morals and ethics and all that stuff. I mean, just, I, I mean, come on. I mean, seriously? Pardon me. She said he pointed at a person in front of them and explained that she would be a good target and that they'd follow her after the concert. I mean, y'all, this guy is a maniac. This guy is a maniac, y'all. They didn't follow her, thank God. Instead, she went into the bathroom and contacted the FBI and one of her housemates to tell him not to let Christensen in their house. I was afraid of him. As she rightfully should, he would totally kill her, y'all. Totally kill her. Uh, she initially forgot to turn her microphone back on as they walked home, but later did when she pretended to go in a subway bathroom. Uh, she said Christensen at one point told her to eat a piece of bread whole, so she gagged a bit, which could be heard on the recording. Her heartbeat could also be heard at times. Oh my God, y'all. She blessed her heart. She was scared to death, y'all. Um, he then told her how he killed Miss Song. He was speaking more loudly, more quickly, with widened eyes, Bulla said. He just seemed excited. When he told her that Miss Zong would be his legacy, Bulla said he laughed a little bit. I mean, this is just shocking. Absolutely shocking. Y'all, this guy, I mean, if he doesn't get the cherry on, I don't know what constitutes it. While telling her more about how he killed Miss Zong, Bulla said he was excited in his demeanor. I've wanted to talk about this with someone so much, he told her. So keep in mind that, I mean, this is exactly what's going on. He did, did this, and he is so proud of himself, so excited. And he probably, to me, it sounds like he had some kind of a serial killer sexual fantasy thing going on. And... Obviously, it became real life for him, but when she enough to where he talked to her about it because remember when she was like, um, Are you still fantasizing about serial killers? He's like, Maybe, you know, that type thing right there. Where I'm like, This was clearly some kind of fantasy that became real life or whatever. Anyways, let's go. So they <clears throat> they stopped at Potbelly Sandwich Top on Green Street, but it was closed, and he continued talking about how he killed Mazong. When comparing himself to serial killer Ted Bundy, Bulla said he was standing very tall when he was walking, and seemed like he was rather proud or boastful. I mean, he was. Comparing yourself to Ted Bundy. Like it's an achievement. But, uh, where is, or right, here we go. Bullis asked if she should be scared of Christensen, and he said, You're safe. But she should worry if she snitched, right? That's true, he responded. He just verbally told me that because of what I was doing, I was not safe, Bullis said Thursday. When Christensen was telling her that no one would ever find Ms. Zong, Bullis described his demeanor as matter-of-fact and clinical, adding, I was scared. I mean, he's very confident of this, y'all. So, uh, after photos and video of her at the walk were published, she said she had to get a new job and mental health treatment and receive between seven to eight grand from the FBI. That's interesting. Uh, defense attorneys will get their cross-examinations after lunch. So they break and they go to lunch. Very interesting about this. I, I wonder if that was like... Because I was wondering that, too. I was just like, this poor girl, her paper, her, her and, and the ex-wife. I mean, they're all out there with their personal business. You know, and I'm just like, uh, what do you do when that happens? Like, do you move? Like, I don't know. And I wonder what the seven to eight grand was for. You know, if it was like to live off of, to help, you know. I mean, she probably had to go into hiding a little bit. We're going to continue with the cross-examination now. And this is by the defense attorney, Robert Tucker. And she makes a note that this is moving very slowly. I mean, y'all see how some of these cases go where it's like, oh my God, oh my God. So, let's go. Tucker was asking about how they met on online dating site OkCupid. And she said she was introduced, she said that she introduced Christensen to kink, BDSM, flogging, and fet life. So, okay, so clearly he liked it, you know. So if he probably had these fantasies going on and apparently she was really into them. And this explains why she seems to know more of the rules. It's like when he's like, we're a dog collared or vigil. She's like, are you crazy? Absolutely not. Um, anyways, Bulla said Christensen's support was substantial when she talked about problems in her life. 
Uh, asked whether she did everything she could during recordings to implicate Christensen, Bullis said no. She described feeling conflicted and confused during the recordings. She said some comments were to continue conversations while others were genuine questions. I didn't want to be having any of those conversations, she said. I mean, can you imagine talking to your boyfriend or whatever they considered each other about you know how he killed this girl? I mean, come on. Uh, Bullis said she drank with Christensen at the vigil because she was concerned about repercussions if she didn't listen to him. So clearly he was like supposed to be in charge, and he kind of ran with that. Uh, she continued to say she didn't think he was drunk at the vigil, despite telling Christensen's wife that he was. She said it was a scale, not a duality. So I'm going to read, essentially, the, the last update, which is kind of like a sum, summination, but it also put some other information in here that I think is pretty interesting. Uh, so it just talks about the closing arguments in the trial uh, are expected to take place Monday morning. This is probably when you'll be seeing this. Uh, the prosecution was set to wrap up its case early Friday morning, followed by the defense's case, which will include testimony from the ex-wife. Uh, Thursday afternoon, Christensen's lawyers continue cross-examination of the ex-girlfriend, Tara Bullis. This is what we've just been going over. Uh, so here's where some little more tidbits come in. Uh, she said the FBI didn't tell her specific questions to ask Christensen, including one about whether Ms. Zong spoke broken English or not. So I'm sure that they're trying to pick apart that, you know, they were like, like an entrapment type thing or whatever. But, I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's just my guess. Okay, here's the part that I talked about earlier with her speaking about someone when she was with another guy. So defense attorney Robert Tucker tried to argue that Bullis provoked Christensen when she sent him a text at 3 a.m. June 9th, 2017, uh, the day visiting the University of Illinois scholar Ying Ying Zhang was last seen about having casual sex with someone. Okay, so if you remember earlier what we were talking about and in one of the other videos where he had gotten up with her or tried to get up with her and he was basically saying that like, oh, my wife's out of town and I want to hang out so I don't become a sociopath and she's essentially like, oh, I'm with somebody else right now, so go on, go on, run along. And he was just like, okay. So, I mean, that's where that comes from. And again, now that I'm seeing that she was the one who introduced him to this stuff, she knows more of the, the rules that you go by. And she, I guess, is kind of teaching him. But it sounds like he's supposed to be the dom or something. I don't know. Anyways, so Bullish replied that she simply wanted to let him know as per her polyamorous ethics. So maybe these are just her ethics and how she rolls. Uh, Christensen texted her back that day with no worries and what was described as a kissy face emoji with a heart. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that probably was eating him up, but he's like, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, when it's really just chewing at him. Because I do think that we might have another situation here of, like, retaliating against women in general. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just blaming... I'm not trying to blame, like, her. I don't want it to sound like that at all. But it's almost like how Ted Bundy was, like, you know, somewhere in there taking this anger that he had towards of rejection and all this stuff out on these women that look like Stephanie. It's almost like a little situation like that here in the making. So this part's interesting about a phone call. So the court heard a phone call from Christensen to his wife from jail on July 4th, five days after he was arrested, and he was asking her to delete his Reddit account. Now, y'all... This is the level of, you know, just, are you kidding me that you're dealing with? He's calling her from jail, you know that's recorded, and asking her to delete his Reddit account. At that point, it's like, it's, that's done. They already have that. Are you kidding me? I mean, and I, if I was the wife, I'd be like, are you crazy? Are you absolutely crazy? You want me to do that? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, what's next? You want me to send you a little jigsaw, you know, a hacksaw on it? A jigsaw. <laughs> I always say the wrong thing. Anyways. So... Uh, according to FBI agent Andrew Hugstat, the wife, his wife apparently deleted a comment on a post about Ms. Zong that said, man, that's very Ted Bundy-esque scary. So he's going on to Reddit, making comments about the crime he committed and talking about how it's Ted Bundy. He wanted to be Ted Bundy, y'all. I mean, he idolized this man. So uh, it just, and I can't believe his wife went and did that. I mean, what, your husband's in jail. Even if there's a question, I'm like, mm-mm. No, I don't want any. I don't. I don't want any charges catching about you know uh, uh, hindering an investigation, tampering with evidence, any of that stuff. You can delete it yourself. You know. Anyways, 
Jurors also heard another call from Christensen to his wife on July 2nd asking about Bullis and telling her to tell Bullis not to say anything except his lawyers. He told his wife that Bullis wouldn't answer his calls. Yeah, think? I mean, if there is ever a situation to be like, yeah, not calling that back, it's this right here, y'all. I mean, it's literally this one right here. Um, you know, of course she's not going to call you back. You know, you killed somebody and you're probably going to kill her too. He goes on to say, Please text or call her to not say anything to anyone but our lawyers, he told his wife, believing that Bullis was still on his side. Reiterate what happened and that I'm innocent. And that's where this article ends. So, y'all, I mean, this guy is all over the map, y'all. He is totally guilty. He has admitted that he's guilty, even though he filed non-guilty charges. And, again, this is one of those where I'm like, this is just absolutely heinous. This person will kill again. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, th they can never see the light of day. This is killing for killing's sake. And not that killing, you know, is ever good on any level. But it's just mind-boggling. So we're going to end this video here. I hope that you all have enjoyed hanging out with me on the sofa with the Sofa Squad. Um, there's links and all that kind of stuff down in the description if you want to hang out with me on my other social media platforms. Uh, join our Discord, join our Patreon, Facebook, whatever you want. Uh, I hope everybody has, I don't know when you'll see this, maybe Monday. Uh, but whenever you see it, I hope you have a good day ahead of you. And I hope you have a good week and weekend. And I will talk to you soon.